Captain Midnight. So, after taking a little vacation last week, I wanted to jump back in with a short video about an MCU project that I honestly hadn't paid much attention to when it was in production, and knew almost nothing about going in. Werewolf by Night a just under hour long TV special on Disney Plus. The fact that it was this standalone, horror tinged thing that felt so disconnected from the rest of the MCU and was released in black and white immediately set it apart as an interesting experiment. And that was made even more intriguing to me by the fact that this is actually Michael Giacchino's directorial debut. For those who don't know, Giacchino is a really prolific composer who has worked in the MCU before, including Spider Man Homecoming. But he has a track record that goes back decades now, from great film scores like Up, Star Trek 09, and The Batman, to the TV project that I'll always associate him with most, Lost. So even though I've been pretty harsh on the MCU Phase 4, and to be honest, have been feeling pretty disengaged from the Marvel Cinematic Universe in general, I decided to check it out. And I'm glad I did. I have some minor issues with Werewolf by Night, and I'll get to that later, but I want to say up front that I think this overall project represents a really fun and surprising development for the MCU, and one that I hope is only the beginning of Marvel's willingness to experiment in horror. Before I really get into this though, I should say there will be full spoilers for Werewolf by Night. Boo. Ah! Uh, uh, good boy, he'll stay. Don't eat me. Jack Russell, aka Werewolf by Night. So the MCU Blade movie seems like it's kind of in disarray right now, from the director leaving to reports that Mahershala Ali is not happy with the script, which keeps getting rewritten. I was reading all of that and feeling like maybe the MCU and the horror side of Marvel Comics just don't mix all that well. Sure, there's been some light horror elements in Marvel movies, but nothing that I think outright embraced the genre in the way that the old Blade movies were known for, even if they were primarily action films. Werewolf by Night does a pretty great job of making the argument that actually horror can work here. And while it's hardly Terrifier 2 in terms of violence, the special doesn't shy away from leaning into both the horror atmosphere and a surprising amount of gore. It's mostly very stylishly shot too. The final 20 minutes or so is where Werewolf really shines, from the monster transformation scene which lingers on Elsa's horrified face, to Jack taking out an entire room of monster hunters. The action here just doesn't feel like typical MCU stuff, which I think is really smart and necessary. One, because that big bombastic action has proved pretty hard to pull off on a TV budget, but changing the style is also so important in establishing the special's own unique identity. And if there's anything that has me excited here, it's that, just how distinct the whole thing feels. Sure, there's still some recognizably MCU elements at play. There's a healthy degree of jokes, most of which I actually think work pretty well. I'll be honest here and admit that Man-Thing is a Marvel character I don't have the most familiarity with. I haven't really read much of his own stuff, and I tend to know him just for popping into other comics I'm reading. Fairly or unfairly, I've always kind of thought of him as Low Rent Swamp Thing. Sure, Man Thing debuted first, but he never really got an incredible Alan Moore run, like his swampy counterpart. I should finally dig into his history more, but as a non fan, I did like the MCU spin on him here, even if it seems pretty different from the original character. He almost functions as the Chewbacca to Jack Russell's Han Solo. Their scene at the end in color, the only full scene not in black and white, set up a really charming and engaging dynamic, and one that I hope to see again in the MCU. Both of these characters, I was pretty sold on immediately. Speaking of black and white though, there is one complaint I had here that didn't exactly surprise me, but I do think it's a fair criticism to bring up. And that's the fact that even though the special goes to such great lengths to bring to mind old universal monster movies like The Wolfman, even going so far as to include film cue reels, commonly known as cigarette burns, to give it that old fashioned horror film feel, the digital cinematography itself really fails to emulate the look of film outside of those little gimmicks. Now I don't expect MCU projects to be shot on film, obviously most things aren't these days, but I think that would have gone such a long way here. They apparently scanned it out in 35mm to try to get it as close as possible, but it still looks very, very digital to me. Which isn't to say that it looks bad, just that it reminds me a lot more of the final season of Better Call Saul than like Bride of Frankenstein or The Invisible Man. 
and I would have loved it if they had just fully embraced shooting on film instead. It's not a huge issue or a deal breaker for me, but the difference is still pretty noticeable, especially when they're adding things in that are meant to suggest that it's playing off a film reel. I'm sure it's for budgetary reasons, but if you're going to commit to the film bit, why not do so fully? Back to the characters though, I have to say going into this, I was not all that familiar with Elsa Bloodstone. I think at some point in the 2000s, I wrote her off as Marvel trying to cash in on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and didn't give her much of a chance, which I guess means that's another comic series I should probably go back to. Here she's played by Laura Donnelly, who I mostly knew from that short-lived Beowulf show from a few years ago and the J.R.R. Tolkien biopic and I really liked her here. I also think the Bloodstone mythology opens up a lot of interesting avenues for the MCU. Though it all did seem pretty similar to the Belmonts in Castlevania, still, I like the specific angle they took with her character, someone who is running away from their family history even as it hangs over her entire life. We only got a taste of her backstory here, but I thought it was really cleverly used when they had her trapped in the family tomb, with Elsa knowing the family lore so well that she knew what relative was buried with the key. Honestly, I could see this character carrying another special like this, one that's maybe focused more on her family specifically. Then there's Jack, played by Gael Garcia Bernal, probably best known for his early work with Alfonso Cuaron. On the page, specifically this special, there's just not that much to Jack. We don't know much about him outside of his friendship with Ted and how he's dealt with being a werewolf in the past, but the character is really carried by the performance, and Bernal is more than up to the task. Werewolf by Night has a really simple premise that it executes well, and I think it points to an interesting possibility for the MCU as a whole. While many Disney Plus shows have felt overly bloated, this was tight, enjoyable, and a lot of fun throughout. It left me wanting more in the best possible way. That's just something I'd like to see a lot more of on Disney Plus. An idea for one story that's unique and not all that connected to the films, it also gives me hope that despite the problems with Blade, there is a way the MCU could nail the horror side of Marvel that's often flourished in the comics but rarely gets a chance to shine outside of them. I mean, Tomb of Dracula is honestly one of the best things they've ever published, but it rarely gets the love of Spider-Man or Iron Man. That's not exactly a surprise, but I think it's an aspect of Marvel history that we could use more of in the MCU. As a TV special, Werewolf by Night is an enjoyable and fun short little horror experience. As a blueprint for where Marvel on Disney Plus could go in the future, I think it's even more exciting than that. Here's hoping that this points to Marvel Studios being really willing to mix it up and try new things on the small screen. And you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Elsa, Jack, and Ted again either. Oh, but before I sign off here, I really wanted to mention something that I do not talk enough about. In fact, I don't think I've mentioned this in a video in months. I do have Captain Midnight merch. Mugs, stickers, pens, it's all there in the link in the description, and honestly, I really love the mugs. Those are my favorites. So go to that link if you want to check them out, give this video a like if you want it to be seen by more people, and I will see you all again on Friday. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.